five, four, three, two, one. And hello, everybody. This is Michael here at California Travel Videos. Welcome to another fun day to do some interviews. A little different interview today. If you look at the pin note up at the top, you'll see that um, I want you. And so later on in the show, as time allows, we're going to go ahead and have some of you come aboard and go ahead and tell us a little bit about what's going on in your life. We can talk about RVs. We can talk about travel. We can talk about adventure. We can talk about you. <laughs> Michael and Grace want you. And Grace is backstage. She's going to be doing some moderating. I think we have some others coming aboard. So um, I don't know if, um, let's see, we got Kathleen with a wrench up there, but we should. So Grace, if not already, Kathleen Klein, welcome. Good to have you here. And Granny Annie's traveling bucket list. Oh, my gosh. That is the best ever, I think. Let me try it again. Granny Annie's traveling bucket list. <laughs> Good to have you here. And Timoteo, mo bang for your buck. <laughs> Good to have you there, my friend. Hope life is treating you well. It's been too long since Oregon. But um, I guess you're frolicking out with some of our fellow RV buddies down south. I'm kind of a little envious, a little jealous of you. But um, I hope it's not too hot for you today because... Um, yeah, we went, um, when you go inland a little bit, you know, we live about 20 miles from the ocean. And um, some days it's foggy, the wind blows. And other days it's like, oh, we get some of that inland stuff, you know, and the temperatures are about the same inland as it is by the coast. It's like a little bit like um, our Siberian Husky Kaliki, you know. <laughs> so I don't know how your temperature is, but I'd be kind of curious. So give us a little heads up on what's going on out in your neck of the woods. Just a little chat for now. Later on, we'll invite some of our good boys and girls aboard. Um, and I think soon, hopefully, we're going to be having some special guests. They're going to join us. It was um, um, awesome experience because I know a lot of you, you like to meet up with our fellow RVers like we did with a dozen up in Oregon. And um, there's some in the northern states, I guess, right? We're going to be having some of the good folks are going up to Michigan and um, then over on the East Coast. Where is it going to be? Tell me where you think it's going to be on the East Coast. I know most of you are going to go. I think they've got maybe in the high 40s that have already signed up. I don't know if they have 50 reservations. But, um, hey, shh, we haven't got ours yet. So I don't know. We're still kind of you know on the fence with so many things we've got going. We've got... Um, another meetup with the escapers subgroup escapees. That's a X C A P E E S. And that's going to be by um, Bryce in um, right there in the corner of Utah. And so, um, yeah, we're looking forward to doing that. And I think it's the middle of August. Now I know August isn't a good time to be out in the lowlands, is it? So what do you do? You go further north, <laughs> and but you can't be that far north in Utah. But um, there's this thing called mountains. And when Grace and I were on the East Coast, we went from the Green Mountains to the White Mountains to the Blue Ridge Mountains. So any mountain's good when it's uh, hot. And I was talking to D Box Van D the other day, Box Cardi, excuse me, and Van D is it? And she was saying that yeah, in Quartzsite. Oh my gosh, Quartzsite. Southern Arizona. What's up with that? But I guess uh, she is thinking about maybe doing a getaway up to Flagstaff. And I remember I used to um, be in Tucson for a couple of years myself back when I was a young pup. And yeah, it was kind of um, okay to go to Flagstaff. It's about six, 7,000 feet. So I wonder if any of you are getting up in the mountains or just um, enjoying the air conditioner, getting off in the water. Um, there's a lot of ways you can go ahead and beat the heat. And I'm hearing somebody is, uh, Grace caught that one. I'm going to go ahead and take a look. Oh, look at this, Derek and Tanya. Hoo-hoo, I've got to get something for them regarding where they're at. Uh, first off, you know, they had to have um, a 1,000 subs. That was it first, the 1,000 subs. And they go, that was easy. That was easy. And then when it came, um, the 4,000 hours, it was. Maybe. Uh, maybe. <laughs> 
But finally, nailed they, nailed they nailed it, and they got their 4,000 hours, and now they're getting up 2,000-plus subs, and they are moving out, and they're doing live streams every way from Sunday. So good to have you, Derek and Tanya. Woo-hoo! You guys rock. And you know how to party, too, I think. And I know that you're talking about going to Mayberry. And so I've got a feeling. Are you going to bring some um, libations with her? Are you going to pick them up when you get there? Or both? I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, I know you guys know how to have fun. So anyway, yes, um, there, Granny, we are going to get excited for what's coming up here today. And um, good show, I think, going up. So we're going to hopefully have our... Good boys and girls coming up in a bit. But, you know, if they're going to be a little bit late with some of the folks uh, that we've invited, we're going to just have an open session, an open season, so to speak. So let's see. Van Life Voyages. Cat being feisty. <laughs> well, we like a little bit feisty. You know, um, Grace and I, we sometimes talk about, like, um, on our recorded RVs, you know, what's the, um, the whiff them? The what's in it? Not for me. What's in it for you? And so is there a story? Is there some drama? And um, yeah, so often, you know, when you get in the middle of it, you're living in your own mind, you know, um, I don't know if you've heard of the power of now, but Eckhart Tolle, he says, sometimes you need to be like the watcher, you know, because you get all the subconscious stuff that really controls most of what we're doing, the 35 decisions, 35 thousand decisions we make every day. And I don't know how many hundred I made coming back from the um, Central Valley today, but um, I think Grace says, you know, some of your decisions, hmm, hmm. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, and I think that's true when you're out on the road too, is it what is going on with your decision? So yeah, drama is sometimes a fun thing. That's one of the requirements are, is my hat, I've got it right over there. It says, Bad decisions make good stories. Well, most of the time, we hope anyway, don't they? So Kathleen says, I love it. Traveling bucket list. Yes, exactly. And um, what else we got there? Um, I hope I'm not scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Oh, I'm sounding like rain now, aren't I? Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Um, Gina has got a show coming up. Hey, you're next up at the bat, aren't you? Are you ready to swing the bat there and hit a home run again? Gina, Van Life with Gina comes after us and... Uh, I thought Grace said that she's an hour late. I don't know. Um, Gina, why don't you weigh in? I thought you normally came at six. So we have an hour and a half for our show, which is sometimes it's kind of seems long. But, you know, when we have two people we're interviewing, it goes a little bit faster. So hopefully they'll be aboard soon. But, um, yeah, she normally comes up next. And it says, um, um, okay, Granny says, cannot go nowhere right now. Hoping daughter, oh, with cancer. I am so sorry. Yes, I think a lot of us have it in the families and, uh, you know, bless you for being the good guardian angel for your daughter, your family, and uh, hearts out to you, your daughter, and um, the network, you know, those healthcare providers and things like that. It's um, something that we really find uh, that there's a lot of wonderful people in the world that help us in our times if we can open up. And some people like to have support groups, others like, no, I'll do it my own. So there's no right answer for these things, but, you know, bless you, Granny. So um, also, um, let's see. Yes, more. Oh, I think I see somebody in the green room and um, she is looking good. She is, man, she is pretty girl. I don't know if she can be doing it herself. <laughs> She's going like this with her fingers. She's not going to be known. She is going to be the woman of mysteries who's coming aboard here in just a moment. So we'll kind of get um, it pumped up for the situation. So, you know, a lot of you um, went to court site last year and this person, our special guest also was a Q21 person. I don't know why I missed her. I was La Poma South and, um, you know, even but Box Man D was only about a mile from me. I did see Teresa, Mark, uh, Teresa and Mike, which were next to him, meant to be RVing. So, yeah, you know, this year when we go to places, um, I'm going to put a bee in my bonnet and move around more from RV to RV. You know, I don't like to always be like, okay, <laughs> us YouTubers, right? Let's start doing some recording videos. But I don't think I've told any of you about my new little unit, now that I mention it. And Grace is like, well, why aren't you using that? You did buy it, didn't you? But I've got a little something in my pocket. When I say a little something... This is something that, um, in fact, our special guest is kind of interesting to talk about her gear. We need to do a little bit of gear talk, don't we? Even though we're mostly about our relationships. But this guy, 
it, it kind of looks like it's, um, if for those of you who have earbuds, the uh, Apple earbuds, it looks like it, but wait, there's more. And you go right there and there's a camera. Well, it's a lot more than a camera. This is the base station and all that stuff. But when we pop this guy out right here, there is the camera. Now, is that about the smallest camera? It looks like half of what my dental floss is even. And so you get this little um, thing you put on your chest like this. Grace says I have too many tripods. This is my tripod, honey. This is my smallest tripod. So it's actually um, ferromagnetic. This is magnetic. And when you like put it on your chest there, look at that. You know? No, this isn't a police cam, although it looks like it, doesn't it? Turn on my police cam. But when you just touch the button and you got to just touch the bottom carefully, or just the whole assembly, it starts recording. And that's about it. It's a spherical lens. That means you can be turning it any way you want. It'll still, in software, it'll have it right. So if you're um, an action camera kind of people, and Grace and I, we have our e-bikes. So anyway, I thought it would be nice. But here again, you don't want to do it stereotypically. Well, the light does come on when it's recording. But you don't want to like do doing the sneaky. But the point is, is like I hope that this year, you and all of us, we can go out and you know, meet, introduce yourself to more people. So sorry I missed you there. Special guest is coming aboard, and I think she is kind of ready. Give me a nod or something like that. Oh, is she Sam? Okay, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Hey, it's Susan from New Horizon. <laughs> How you doing, dear? I'm um, just fine. <laughs> Are you going solo today or is where's Big Jim? Um, he's taking care of the dogs right now. <laughs> oh, well, let's talk about the dogs first. Now, <laughs> um, is taking care mostly of the Pomeranian or with the older one or which one? Oh, there we go. How there, about that? Yeah, yeah. There is the star. <laughs> oh, oh, I didn't he, realize she he, had so many um, spots. Do you think that her hair is she's going to get um, well, those it's dark a little spots? Boy. Well, he didn't have as many spots when we first got yeah. him. Boy, they're really becoming more prominent now. I think he's and becoming he, a Dalmatian, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, his ears finally went up. But he, he has one um, black, on the one side where there's black, he has a black eyelashes. And on the side he's white, he has white eyelashes. Ah. Uh, <laughs> now you had what, like not one, two, three, four, but I think you had a handful yeah. of kids. Did you not? We had five boys. Five boys, and now you've got like, um, you know, as they, as they, again with babies. <laughs> <laughs> but as they go out, you know, to pasture, then you got to have some replacements, right? Your maternal germ genes. What's up with that? <laughs> you are uh, a sweetheart. Uh, oh, he now see that's what he does when he wants your attention. Oh, he gets I see. And going like that. Oh, well, yeah. It looked to me like he was like a rocket clearing for takeoff. Like he's, I'm, I'm heading up to the sky. He is definitely, he's definitely the people person. And then Miss Abby, she's kind of retiring herself back and laid back now. She, uh, she's letting him have the star of the, the ring. I'm going to be like Gina. Uh, Gina, either Gina is like, oh, Lordy, <laughs> what is going on here? But yeah, you know, it's like, it, I tell you, it makes you younger. And I hope oh, by the end of this call, that I've got some of your non-accent. You know, I, everybody from another place has accent. And you know, say, oh, you have a Southern drawl or whatever like that. <laughs> but I love watching your videos because your presence and your demeanor and things like that, it's like you're self-assured and you're just kind of, um, you know, just kind of having a relationship base and you're very sincere and intimate and um, all those things I'd like to be, but... <laughs> Or is um, that kind of a prerequisite? Did your mom teach you that, or where does that come from? Yeah, you know, she she told us if you know if you're going to do something, make sure it's something that you believe in. If you don't believe <laughs> in it, it's not going to show. And and, and my grandma, and my aunt, have always instilled that in us. And but I try to I try to be happy, but sometimes you're like, Ugh. <laughs> yeah, and. And that is so true. I mean, but that's part of being genuine is to say, you know, I got to lick my wounds or let my puppy lick my face or something to kind of help me give me a, a little boost. But hey, look who we got here with us. Van life does rock indeed. Hello, Rocket Man Ray. You know, everybody else calls him Ray, but I'm thinking he is a Rocket Man. So let's start calling the Rocket Man Ray. <laughs> and Nash, good to have you here. And I love that. Look, it's got little kisses and things they're sending over your way. 
Yeah, <laughs> baby. You deserve them all too. Yeah. So, just, um, oh, go ahead. That's so, huh? We just did that fun video. We went through a drive through pet and zoo, and I declare those animals, some of them stunk. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if it's a camel, I know that they can hang a loogie a long way. So I have a lot of respect for camels or things like that. Um, and I told my husband, I said, watch it. They'll burp on you. And it smells like rotten eggs. I couldn't help them all. <laughs> and that is not always a good thing. Picking, we're still picking feed out of our truck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's funny. You know, when I go to like Mount Lassen, which, you know, it's mostly an inactive um, volcano. But they have like Bumpus Hill, and I think that you know, and Yosemite, and put some places like I'm sorry, Yellowstone, they do, where they have some of the um, sulfur pits that you can smell, and it's like, I'm like, did I have beans? Was that me? <laughs> Where's that coming from? You know, it's like I swear it's not me, <laughs> even though I smelled it first. But um, yeah, sometimes you just have to have a good sense of humor when it comes to different, not odors, but um, just fragrances. I guess you might call them. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you, you started off by talking about something that hit a nerve. And um, we could go down this for like hours. But I'd love for you to share about, uh, for those that don't know, and I know a lot of you probably do near. There's Susan. But, you know, it's like how you got into this show business. <laughs> and so, <laughs> you know, there's been some things where you've had your own personal journey and wanting to help people with the similar type of journey. And if, how about for like three or four minutes, just tell us about how you got here. We'd love to hear. Well, I was diagnosed right about seven years ago of having a crippling rare nerve disease called RSD, also known as CRPS. And it's where the nerves go in and start attacking the body and you feel like you're on fire. Um, mm -hmm. I can wake up in the middle of the night and my legs and feet feel like they're just inflamed in fire. Yeah. Um, I have night sweats and I was sitting around and just more or less having my pity party because I know what the outcome through support groups was going to be for me. Mm -hmm. And we were up in the Smoky Mountains and I, I just said, I, I just need a sign. I just need something right. to like, you know, I got to figure out a way to help other people that's somewhat in the same situation because we struggle trying to, you know, do I, can I get help to get this? Can I get help to get that? I'm on the phone with insurance companies. And oh, well, God forbid on that one right there is that when you're oh. already down on your luck with your pain and then you're like, it's hard to focus. And then all the paperwork, I can't imagine what it would be like for you. And then I said, you know, then, of course, we had always adopted animals. So I tried to incline Abby in with that and help her make donations to animal shelters made through our PayPal and our channel membership. And... I just want to, and we have been able to successfully help some disabled people. We've got a chair for one. Mm -hmm. We help locate um, alcohol. It was something simple as alcohol pads during the pandemic could not be found. And we got lucky through Amazon and found them. Um, we helped uh, Kenneth Oaks get glasses. I mean, it was just different things like that it makes you feel I'm not useless no more i can help people yeah i mean humbled on one side but knowing that you have things yet as i said you don't want to live in a pity party but then on the other mm -hmm. hand it's like oh i still have my little, i still have my pity parties but <laughs> i think no we have, i mean it's it, if anybody so deserves it i mean you know folks like you that have go through that and um my wife, Grace, um, you know, her fibromyalgia, you know, when they try yeah. everything else, they can't figure out, oh, you must have fibromyalgia. I'm surprised they didn't give her some long acronyms like you've got, but the um, still, it's, you've got different symptoms than well, she does. I mean, but you know, It's kind of on the same ordinary as fibromyalgia, but yet not. And then, of course, I developed arthritis in here with everything. And um, I found out next week, I because I hit my top, big toe, on a basket yeah. that her shoes in it and RV. I thought I broke it. And he said, no, all you did was stir up the, the arthritis and busted it 
to where it's spreading more. So I go in next week and get shots in both feet before I hit the road to the Smoky Mountains. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of which, I mean, all this stuff, and yet I'm thinking, let's see. I don't know if Jim did 99% of the heavy lifting, but still the cocaine and things like that, you know, you were not like just chopped liver. You were doing things when you were like, I'm thinking, you know, you've got your fifth wheel and we'll <laughs> love to talk about your beautiful fifth wheel. The grand design is like, you rock too, baby. But, you know, it's <laughs> like, um, you think just getting everything ready to go and then doing the planning and to, to uh, I don't know, probably took you four days, five days, maybe more, but <clears throat> you got the trip to get out there yeah, and then all the stuff and things. It's like, how do you find all that strength and energy to do that? Just the love to get out and explore. And if I can help somebody along the journey, that's mm -hmm. enough for me. I mean, Jim is the biggest help. I mean, he does. I don't drive. I haven't drove for five or six years. No, of course. And if it wasn't for him, I mean, he helps do the laundry. He helps do the cooking. And, you know, he's not, he's a, right in there. He's my rock. That is true. And I'm sure that um, the emotional support, you know, that is even paramount. Yeah. But yet knowing that just someone's there to listen to and to be able to <clears throat> maybe do some things where, I mean, we all need to feel relevant and, you know, to yeah. just kind of, People who withdraw and go within, I, we can't really blame them. We're not walking in their shoes. But, you know, I guess I, all I can say is we admire you. And um, so like Derek and, and Tanya and all those people out there, so many of us, hey, as we get up there, it's like we have our little chinks in our armor, sometimes more than just a chink. But, you know, um, I just I think we should all admire you and thank you for being so inspirational for the rest of us. And I guess what? There's this thing called Mayberry and like, Who's going to come up with these ideas and then kind of like pull through. So we're going to go to there. Do you want to try to hit that one next? That's fine. Okay. Um, so you've got, uh, first off, I'm going to get off of the screen here for a second and have another one. Well, I should see if there's anything else I'm missing there. Let's see. And so uh, Tracy's here. Howdy, Tracy. And um, Mo Bang is saying sometimes it's best to know anything and live your life to the fullest while waiting for the big guy to call her names. <laughs> that is so good, Tim. But, you know, here he is. His eyesight isn't what it used to be. And a lot of other things, you know, here is like you're a boat person from Vietnam and all the stuff you've gone through in other countries to get to the United States. And um, yet he is got um, where... He enjoys, I mean, I, I kind of wonder sometimes if he's a double agent or something like that, because he's always on the move. It's hard to hit a moving target. That guy is like, <laughs> we had um, a, a guest here for a couple of days, um, Kevin from No Mock Experience, and um, he's just like um, a true nomad. So, you know, it's like great to see these people like Tim and whatever that get out on the run all the time. So um, let's see, Water Girls here. Howdy. Good to have you here. And and um, who else? We got Jennifer. Hey, howdy. And um, the Dyson's Crazy Adventures. You know, there's a lot of people who have the name Adventures. And before we start talking about Mayberry, um, for those of you who want to find New Horizons, with a plural, and you search for it, and there's this other one. It's I swear it's with the same exact name. I mean, yeah. California travel videos is almost, but when I search for New Horizons Space Mayberry, nailed it. So what do you recommend? <laughs> How do they find your channel before we talk about Mayberry? I just usually, uh, they're for, you know, it's just a hit and miss if you can find it right off the bat. And yeah. sometimes I put my name in there, Susan Bates, at, at the end of it, and bam, it pops up. Or, oh, know, with Susan, yeah, with your name. Duh. I, yes, of course. So um, when I started yeah, New Horizons, it, there was no other New Horizons. <laughs> no, but I think the other New Horizons spelled exactly the same way. They have 100,000 subs. And so like, uh, come on. So we need to get them up to 101,000 subs. I'm not saying to subscribe, but if you do and you want to make it easier for me to find, it would help with Susan, Jim, and myself. So, uh, but it's good to see your channel. It's like you're kind of like some of us organic, you know, you're kind of consistent. And we'll take a look at some of your channel later. But let's go start talking about Mayberry. Now, tell me about first, 
last year, I mean, the, the concept of it and the origin and how did this thing get off the launch pad? Well, um, I, we went and visited Mayberry as a vacation last year and a year before. And I put out some mm -hmm. videos and Blue Wave saw them and then Camper Life saw them. And I was on their chat and he said, I said, you know, one day I like to have a big old meetup over there in Mayberry. Well, wouldn't that be cool? And Camper Life goes, let's do it, Susan. And so we said that he called the office and set it up. And he goes, well, just call it the Camper Life and New Horizons meetup. And I said, fine. And it so it was like a, a double header, the two of two. And of it just kind of exploded a little bit last year. I mean, of course, the pandemic mm -hmm. hit. And of course, Canada could people couldn't come, Justin, Christina, and different ones. And we had some of those cancellations and regular cancellations because people's jobs shifted, their vacations shifted, and mm -hmm. they couldn't come. So last year, I think we had anywhere from 20 to 25. And this year, it has just blew up. I mean, we, had, we are now 48 channels signed up 48 channels of now and that's the kind of a thing um i guess that while it's primarily a lot of us are producers sometimes grace is i'm too much of a consumer michael get more videos out dog on it but you know but it is mostly <laughs> for the people who are um youtubers but if someone was um you know Anybody. they were an rv or traveler you're not gonna like bust them are you no <laughs> no of no. course not we are saying subscribers <laughs> anybody can come to it i mean uh, I think at the last count, then when I called the office the other day, there was two sites left. And if you're 30 foot or under, they can accommodate you or they had hotels or and it, and, or they could refer you to another campground. That's about yeah. 30 minutes away. 30 minutes away. So even, yeah, it's, and you know, it used to be, I think in the early year, there's a lot of them are kind of nested closer together, but now they can be anywhere in the park. It's not like they have to be mm -hmm. in a no. tight group, do they? No. No, there's a bunch of us up in the, what the, we call the main, it's up on a hill in the mm -hmm. main, what we call the, the party area where the events are going to be held. I was going to say, Derek, now, Derek, you be listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> and then the rest of them are kind of scattered out. We kind of got, uh, we was able to block off different sections the best we could last year when we did this, mm -hmm. this year. And next year, they've already told us that they're going to block off even more. To accommodate mm. everybody. She awesome goes, blossom. Yeah. She said from what is shown this year on the statistics, next year we could be even more. So so, so you must be very popular. Here you're gonna just have a couple <laughs> last year and they just keep popping up. See, are you like the cool kid? I don't know. <laughs> I think you are. I, I got a great committee that's been helping me a lot. Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> so you are a leader now and you have a committee. Yeah. Hmm. Well, last okay. year we didn't have a committee, and we was all kind of like, well, you know, we'll tell you what's in town available. If you want to go, you can, or mm -hmm. we could, you could just hang out at the campfire. Well, a lot of us just hung out at the campfires and talked and interviewed each other, and it was That's just for good, sure. It was just a good friendship. We weren't we weren't strangers to each other. We were a family sitting around campfires last year. That's that's the name of the game, isn't it? Just kind of yeah. to have. Um, relationship and community sharing uh, tips and tricks and or help if someone had a problem with something we were there to help each other mm -hmm. so. so is it true that you make um, a $200 commission off of everybody who stays there I wish <laughs> <laughs> well you know you know what traveling Robert does we get you a super chat <laughs> super chat yeah <laughs> No, I mean, think about all that time that she and Jim and her committees put in. And, you know, it's like, uh, oh, I guess it was two years ago now. It's like they, well, maybe a couple years before that, they said, how would you like to be Rotary president? And Michael was like, like, really? <laughs> and I thought, well, you know, the reason I did it was because all the people 12 years before me that were president, I thought, you know, it's a sense of not just duty, but it is an honor to be able to do that. And yeah. so... Um, I guess that you're not doing it to get more 
YouTube subs or no. to, you know, monetize your channel or to make sure that people sign up for your Patreon or membership. But no. you do have those things. And when people find out that you're a genuine person, it kind of comes because it's the notion of giving. And um, when you give, then people think, you know, you're a pretty decent person and more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we just, I mean, it was just a bunch of friends Run. and family members sitting around talking Run. and helping each other is all it was. Mm -hmm. Now, I see somebody mention this um, name, initials are A-G. And I know Mayberry's kind of popular for a couple things. One of them is about a movie star whose initials were A-G. So I guess some of the people, I, you did a video that kind of shows about all the fun things to do around town. And it's, um, I don't know if you call it in a nostalgic way, but it is in a way that is kind of like, you know, the good grassroots value. So tell us about Andy. <laughs> oh, and, um, the character Andy Griffin was really something, I mean, of course, the show was not filmed in Mount Airy. It was filmed no. out in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. But if all of his characters arrived from people that he grew up in that town, just like Floyd the Barber. He looked just like Floyd the Barber, the guy that actually, you know. Oh, is that right? Huh. And that guy thought, well, everybody thinks I look like him. So he eventually changed his name of his shop to Floyd's Barbershop. And his uh, son, we're good friends with, runs the sh uh, place now. And he loves to tell the history and the story. And all over the wall in that shop is pictures he takes with each person that comes in there. And he'll tell you that middle seat right there in that shop is the one Andy Griffith set in to always get his hair cut. Is that right? And Andy always huh. ate lunch at Snappy's Diner. So do so. you think like the people that wrote the script, they kind of, they came from there? Or how do they know about the association with Mount Airy and the Andy, show? I don't know. Andy created all these characters. Like there's a restaurant, a bar there called The Loaded Goat. If you ever remember the episode, <laughs> The Loaded Goat, <laughs> ate the dynamite. Yeah, and right. And then there's the sign up there about uh, that one street. And that was in the episode where, oh, the one that always threw the rock. Oh, Ernest T. Bass threw the rock. That was his significance there. And he had a town drunk like Otis growing up. And that was how he created the character Otis. Yeah. But, you know, the stories, um, they were about relationships. And like we were talking about, mm -hmm. some of the things that you've had for your life, the good and the bad. And I'm seeing that um, Kevin's here. Hey, Kevin, he was with us for the last couple of days. Mr. The No Mock Experience. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's like I thought, okay, you know, when someone comes to town, to your town or whatever, you you want it to be a fun experience. And so, well, mm -hmm. um, okay, well, we've got uh, a nearby, I guess some people call it a <laughs> mountain, but it's certainly a tall hill. And you know, the weather all of a sudden is like, it was hot. And normally it's not that hot here, but it was like in the high eighties and with his, um, you know, um, one dog is um, certainly more than a, a, a golden she or German shepherd dog. And the other one is definitely, but you know, it's like they have a lot of hair and all of a sudden mine's Siberian Husky. And it's like, well, we'll do some. And mine was like, well, you know, okay, we saw the pond. He's like, I'm going to go in the pond. <laughs> I'm going to go cool <laughs> off. You know, and we kind of, sometimes we kind of improvise and we make do. And then the next day is, well, okay, you know, we've got this beautiful ocean 20 miles away and we go to the ocean and it was colder than a well diggers. You know what? In January, it was like the wind was blowing at least 20, 25 knots. And it was overcast for the first 300 feet. And it probably was nice at eight, nine in the morning, but we got there. It was like, Okay, I've got a couple extra jackets for you, Kevin. So we put on the jackets and the dogs were like, hey, man, we're loving this. And so anyway, you know, sometimes I guess it is you just make do. And so I think that um, Andy Griffin and things like that, there isn't always like a miracle that happens. Just like at um, Mayberry, I'm sure there's some opportunities and things like that that go on. But uh, if you've got good committees and everyone's got a good um, uh, sense of camaraderie between one another you just kind of do like you do personally you know with some of your travesties and things and it's you you say well um like sometimes we just like when we're with our partners you say well 
let's talk about it tomorrow. I'm going to take a walk or take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, on your committees, what are some of the things that go on? I mean, I imagine that there's, you know, the, the fireside or the evening things. Are, are some of it like food related? Or do you think you're going to have some uh, well, um, food not, sharing? Or, um, oh, we're going to have a pie eating contest. A pie eating contest. Like you have to have the hands behind the back, that kind of pie eating contest? Yes. Or? Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to have a scavenger. We're having, we got kids activities mm -hmm. and I think Charlie Grace from for our best friends is doing dog activities. Oh, that's and nice. I, so it's, it's kind of family oriented in a way then, right. even if and your dog's your family. One of them, one of the nights we're having a Hawaiian themed night. Um, we're got on, on Saturday, the last big day of everything. We're doing, we do a big pitch-in dinner with a prayer, and at the same time, we do a giveaway. Each person, each channel usually donates something. We never had a problem last year. Some channels donated more than one item. Is that like a kind of exchange kind of thing, then, is what it is? Yeah. And because I know when it comes to like the Chinese gift exchange or white elephant, I, I kind of suck. I guess you want to win. You want your number to be number two. <laughs> I was like, don't take my gift, please. Don't take my gift. Well, we everybody puts their channel name on a paper and we okay. put it in the hat and the kids draw out the name. Oh, and that sounds like a blast. Year, last year, um, my husband and the channel traveling down the banisters donated the money and got each one of the kids a little uh, throw blanket, you know, kid oriented. Oh, that's so nice. Have. So the kids walked away with something. So they didn't feel left out. And then, then I, right. I, I can't, you can, how can you not give away to kids? Cause it makes them so happy. <laughs> yeah. But we had, um, fire extinguishers <laughs> last year. We had Sorry. shower heads. We had gift certificates. And channel gear, we had all kinds of giveaways last year, and this year we got even more. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's really nice where you have things where it's here again a sense of community, and so mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just kind of think is that some of the people are kind of off the cuff, you know, they just make things up as you go <laughs> along too. It doesn't have to be a hundred percent planned event. So sometimes there's these, like you say, the the rowdy group or whatever, but you know, and so. It, not everybody has to report to just one function, right? Right. And this year on the property, the property that the campground is on was um, the Ying and Chang Bunker Farm. And yeah, I wanted to bring up the that. Yeah. Twins. yeah, the same. And didn't they, they were the ones who created the RV park? Yes, they're the ones that created it. Oh, yeah, so it was their farm. And family through the generations turned it into a campground and they still own it the bunker family and they have a big huge reunion there every year and they said that town is packed with bunkers <laughs> and i asked him if archie bunker was a relative and they wouldn't answer me so <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I like that. Michael Ann spoiled or oiled and mama is here in the house. And Tracy, so happy to have you here. I hope things going up well for you. Miss you again already. And I said, Leticia was here a little while ago. I think she's here, but meant to be uh, certainly enjoying the day today. And um, anybody else that I missed here? So I think somebody snuck in there. Um, burning up the road, I think. Yeah, I did see you there a little while ago. So good to have you all here. And we're having the first half of the show where we're talking about Mayberry and all things good. I'm going to get back to that. But I wanted to segue for a second since, um, you know, uh, some people are aware of this. Others not so much. But this last year is that, uh, you know, the Recreational Vehicle Industry Association had um, merit awards for who had like the best service, the best quality vehicles out there by, you know, customer satisfaction. And like, I think about four out of every five categories. No, it wasn't Airstream. No, it wasn't Tiffin. No, it wasn't Prevost. And uh, what else would be New Newman? It wasn't those, but it was grand design. So have you been happy with your rig and tell us a little bit about um, what your, your wheels are like? Um, we're loving it. I mean, just like anything brand new, you're going to find a little flaw here and there. And we, um, you know, warranty sure. stuff. And right now we're working with them and they have, anytime we do have a problem, 
Um, we've called them and we've got a service tech, tech out and they've fixed it and Green Design has paid for it. And I love this layout because I'm the most important thing to me to be full time in one was I wanted a separation from, between my living room and kitchen. Mm -hmm. And the bedroom is a place you just sleep at night. And it didn't have to be anything extraordinary fancy. And I wanted storage. Storage was a major problem and they had to have. And this model here has really, I love it. I couldn't ask for anything different. I wouldn't want anything bigger because then you can't get into all your state parks or national parks. And we wanted to keep it within a certain length and I'm loving it. And yeah. their mm -hmm. customer services really came through for us. It, I mean, I can't say enough good things about them. Wonderful. Well, and like you say, it's nice to have um, a lot of storage because, you know, if, mm -hmm. if things don't work out well in your relationship and, and Grace and I, you know, I'm praying for every day that we make it to the very end. But if they don't, it sounds like you and I would be perfect match. We like a lot of stuff. And Jim and Grace, maybe they're kind of, you know, maybe. They'd be, <laughs> but pray for me because I'm going to be better, Grace. I promise. But I'm going to try to minimize because um, this Sunday we're going to have to downsize because we want to get on the road and already the RV's filled. And she's like, OK, Michael. That's a nice thing you've got. What are you going to get rid of? And I like pout a little bit, but um, we would love to have um, some inflatable kayaks is what we'd like to have. And so mm -hmm. I'm kind of looking, okay, I think this bin has to go. We have like a um, Instapod in it and some other things. So where can we put the Instapod? <laughs> so do you know what I mean? You, it's nice to have enough spaces, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, of course, when we got rid of stuff and downsized for this, and he had to get rid of that big old pellet smoker grill that was his like that was his baby and he was like mm -hmm. oh but then a, a good friend of ours bought it from us and so he knew he's like well at least i know they'll enjoy it the way i enjoyed it mm -hmm. and yeah i go i donated and donated and donated and donated and i'm like i'll have mercy <laughs> yeah speaking of have mercy look what grace is saying Say what? Say what? <laughs> I'm in trouble. I was just a joke, honey. I know it was a cheap joke. I will. Uh, I'll take you out tonight, and um, I know what you want. Um, Kevin didn't drink all of our um, libations there, and um, that was pretty good. We we're not really Scotch drinkers. I'm not going to get into too much about our picadillos, but um, okay, honey, I will. I will be better, and um, <laughs> you can you can punish me in whatever way you see fit. Okay, sorry, darling. <laughs> I'm that way. I don't know. I apologize. <laughs> Michael Santana, welcome into the house. And um, so, and also, Sean, I hope life's going well for you today. And so, okay, next up, I guess we're going to talk a little bit about um, your things that are happening around you, not just so much physically. I'd like to talk about that. But I guess that I think it's a three day at Mayberry. And I hear some people are saying, well, we'd like to piggyback just like. Um, and Captain Jack comes before me and rocking with Gina comes after me. I'm kind of the sandwich man stuck in between, stuck in the <laughs> middle again. And so I think, isn't there something going on? I don't know, Tennessee or whatever. I thought I heard Marshall or somebody talking about some other things where people are going to piggyback on Mayberry. What's up with that? Well, I know there's a Michigan meetup coming up before the Mayberry. One. Yeah. It's about and like maybe before a month Michigan. before or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. the month before, but I'm going to be on the, I'm going to be in the outer banks in North Carolina out by the ocean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've yeah, never seen your... the ocean in my life and I, I'm so excited. I've never seen the ocean. You guys got to see this video because in one of the videos she's recently done, it's like, you know, um, I want to see the ocean. And Jim says, well, I can get you a picture of it right now if you want to see it. Like, no, no. I want to feel it. like mother. Uh, my mom is, is, she's really like spending my inheritance. So I say, good, mom, go ahead and enjoy. Go on those cruise ships. But she says, until you smell it, you know, until you feel it, you know, it's like just the visual. It's not quite the same experience. <laughs> well, I got them. We got the American Beautiful Pass for the disabled. So the campground, <laughs> we're staying at with, with our friends. We can stay there half price. So oh. 
Is that what you call a semi mooch? Yeah, semi mooch. <laughs> yeah, why not? No, that is nice where you can go ahead and save a little bucks. Now, Mayberry, what is it about 40 some of that? I can't remember what the price was. What are they saying? I think it's like uh, 36 or 38. 38. That is cheap. 38. Wow. That is great price. You've got to mention the Mayberry meetup to get it. That I'm gonna have to talk to lobby to Grace. I, you know, it's like oh, nice. we have sometimes grandkid duty and other things duties, yeah. but um, we're kind of thinking like um, it looks like the stars. You have to sometimes be in the right position, and Just so uh, you can go through the Smoky Mountains or the Appalachian Mountains, getting mm -hmm. there, and mm -hmm. all that beauty around there. Yeah, Blue Ridge Parkway. Yeah, I got to be more like Tim and Kevin and people like that. And, you know, they're like, okay, I'm going to go like about 900 miles today, maybe a thousand tomorrow. And so, you know, chop, chop, they're across yep. to the other side of the country. So, yep. yes, I guess you know about the 330 group, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we like, mm, I'm not so much at 330 in the afternoon. We don't always get going that <laughs> fast in the morning. But, yeah, 330 miles, no problem, man. It's like I might be pulling in eight at night. <laughs> You know, I have to get my lights out to go ahead and level, but it's it's fine. Well, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm we the did, night owl so often. We did the we did a long hard pull getting out to quartzite, and that was a little too much. I mean, we did it yeah. five days. Oh we my didn't lordy! Time to see mm -hmm. anything. We stayed stayed at Cracker Barrels overnight or campground one time, but you know we sh we learned after that one though. You got to slow. Damn. Yeah. You want the quality of the experience. And, and it's right. like when I used to be on a cruise ship as a guest lecturer, what would happen would be, you know, after about a week or two, I'd be at like a month I would be gone, which is a whole nother story. But, you know, at some point you just all this getting over sensationalized about it. You kind of like you get lost in the cities. And if you right. like have enough time to kind of like when Grace and I were like, you know, I don't know about you, but if we're doing a video and sometimes it may be about three years before I get it produced, but you like to at least have enough to remember it besides just mm -hmm. seeing the video that you did a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, if, when you're full time, don't, don't treat it like vacation. Mm -hmm. If you treat it like a vacation for one, you'll go broke and two, you ain't going to relax and then have fun. Exactly. Just take your time. Take, take your, your time and do it right. And I've seen so many RVers. I'm sure you've watched some of these videos too, where they don't take enough time when they're parking. Mm -hmm. The next thing they're <laughs> kind of pouting because, and I wouldn't say I've done that, but sometimes I scrape, you know, some of the trees a little bit and it's like, oh yeah, um, I meant to have that RV up by the top of it. It's, it's kind of a nice design, isn't it, darling? <laughs> well, we just smashed our tailgate, so. <laughs> oh, so you're, yeah, welcome to the club, right? <laughs> yeah. Every, yeah those, everybody's going to have their boo-boos in there. The yeah. boo-boos. Yeah, that's what makes <laughs> us, um, you know, we've got some character with our scrapes and scabs and your, your feet, you know, your poor toes and things where you used to have like some pretty good bones. And now I understand you have a lot of toothpicks in there, right? Yeah, yeah I have a lot of toothpicks. <laughs> 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 so how about your travels you got anything else planned between now and then where you'd like to go um, you'd like well, to do? We're, we're going to head to the smoky mountains uh next week the end of next week to uh, help our friends one of our friends celebrate their birthday and we're going to go over into cherokee north carolina and, and watch the elk for a while then we got to come back home because we're having that Ar rv armor put on a roof so we never have to oh. work a roof ever again yeah is that stuff like way about like five thousand pounds is armor <laughs> <laughs> and then we're heading up to ohio to visit with some friends up there and then um we have some other friends in ohio we're gonna visit with and we're just gonna <laughs> start taking our time and traveling around i want to mm -hmm. go to virginia home of the show the waltons they have a museum there oh I'm wonderful big, mm -hmm. i've been a big fan of the waltons so i want to view that and we want to go to cooters in west virginia i'll be doggone west by god virginia to cooters yeah. what happens at cooters stays in cooters probably That's right, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah grace took us to gosh i can't remember the name of the bar there Grace, tell us what bar that was. We went with your friend there. It was uh, I do believe that was in Nashville, and um, 
Well, um, it's been kind of um, a bar where the girls, they dance some, um, and it's been actually in um, a movie and things like that. What's the name of that one, well, darling? I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, Ugly Coyote. Yes. Oh. yes. <laughs> yeah. I remember but it's movie. so much fun. I mean, it's, what would you say? It's uh, it's an experience where, you know, people have a good time, and um, uh, I think, even if you just go as a spectator sport, these things are kind of fun to see what goes on. But when we were there, it was like, um, you know, they have all, and I don't know if they have this pageantry every weekend, but it's like all these cars have got all these people. And some of them, you know, I guess they're kind of paid to kind of like, hey, guys, come on and see our bar and car bar. But they have like, a, it's like a flotilla of all these things that are going by and they're singing and things. And it's like right out there on the streets. You, know, you don't have to go inside the bars. Uh, that is so much fun. So it's to get that culture in different cities and to have some laughs and memories. Um, it's just the same, same kind of stuff you get at Meadbury. And speaking of special laughs and fun i think Teresa and mike meant to be our veen yeah, is here there. and so good to have you here and so um yeah Teresa is always so uh full of vim and vigor and mike is <laughs> like you know when you see that drone coming if you don't have a hard hat on just duck he's gonna be okay well, we, we <laughs> they flew drones last year when we was doing our big group photo and it's right. like bumblebees overhead and i kept wondering <laughs> then if it was going to buzz over the top of the, you know like you know scalp the that's Indian. right that's what happened to me i mean i used to have a lot of hair and look at like now it was the drones i'd swear that's what it was <laughs> but it's fun to have boys in their toys that's for sure and mike i gotta say his drones are take a lick and keep on ticking it's like his drones just won't <laughs> die you know it's like i think he i i gotta figure as he's like if i like um lose it in the canyon or if i lose it underwater is that i can get a different model i don't know but no that sucker it just keeps coming back it's got <laughs> nine lives he's only lost two of them so far <laughs> so what else is new in your woods over there anything going on in your fair state or um things that you'd like to share with us um no, I always say I kind of live in the boring state, Indiana. <laughs> the fun stuff's in northern part of Indiana. Yeah. You know, I'm eventually getting up there to Shippeshawana mm -hmm. and Elkhart, Indiana. We're trying oh, to really? creep our way up there. And Elkhart, I hear they something happens in Elkhart, Indiana, isn't it? Yeah, what happens you, in Elkhart? They build oh. RVs. They build RVs is about three or four a year, or how many do they build? Oh, they make millions. <laughs> it's <do>. RV capital. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I look in the backyard. You know, we have like um, God knows how many gophers, but I'm thinking that's what happens over in Elkhart. Is all these people are just kind of scrambling and scrambling and just <laughs> let them through the assembly line, aren't they? But it's we phenomenal. We've been up to ship in Shawana, Indiana, before uh, years ago when our boys were little, and uh. It is a beautiful area. It's an Amish Mennonite community, and the Amish food up there, oh, have mm. mercy, it's good. Oh, it's listen good. to this. As my wife is on a keto diet, and Grace is like, uh, once in a while, she'll see those carbs, you know, and how it is. You were talking about smelling the salt in the ocean, some of you, and you did there. And it's like, she's like, <laughs> you know, some of the Amish food and things. It's like, <laughs> oh, man, it's worth it one time. I'll do whatever... I have to pay for my sins tomorrow, but yeah, the Amish food is just, well, I think on some of your videos, you've shared some of it, haven't you? Some of the pies and things they make. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Rayleigh created travel. I'm not a Bama fan. I'm a Vols fan. And I told him at the Mayberry meetup, it's Alabama and Vols game on. He's going to wake <laughs> up with Vols decorations all over his rig. And he's yeah. going you... to wake up with Alabama all over yours. <laughs> Do you get a little exuberant on um, your fans? I think somehow oh, yeah. you, your voice comes up a couple octaves, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> she is animated. She is an animated girl. And I like sometimes with Jim, it's like if he's piping off, you know, I'm going to give him a wet willy, you know, a wet willy. <laughs> when I saw that, I thought, this is my kind of girl. <laughs> like, you know how to get down and get dirty. <laughs> and I told him, I said, I'm going to have a balls thing for you to win. And it's going to be a shirt and you got to wear it, boy. <laughs> Oh, like that. Oh, that's the, ooh, that's some payback there, isn't there? 
Now you used to come from up north, didn't you? Before you ended up where you're at now, is that right? Didn't you uh, we were move about three or four years ago? Yeah, we were originally here from Southern Indiana. Then we moved to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, and we lived there for two years. And that's when we sold it to go full time. Good. Excuse me, just a second. Grace said she's going to give me a wet willy in a minute. I just can't. I got to go back. No, I'm not going to. <laughs> Honey, I want, I want to do a rain check on that wet willy. Oh, rain check. Oh, that kind of sounds. But um, no, so you had a career up there and then um, family and things got you kind of down in your neck of the woods. And so, um, uh oh, <laughs> excuse me. Time out. Time out. He's got earplugs. <laughs> Look at this. I, it's not like I'm eh, hard of hearing, but I have these in-ear monitors, so I'm going to have to take it out. I can't hear you. <laughs> okay. You really did do it. Oh, man. Okay. Well, maybe I'll, I don't know if my in-ear monitors are going to work now, but oh, it's wet, honey. I, oh, honey, I like this. Ooh, I wish you would have done my other one. <laughs> Uh, payback's a you know what. <laughs> no, but I guess is that, yeah, you've been um, living in a couple different states there and had a lot of different career assignments. And, um, you know, um, I, I think you got a lot of street smarts over the years, haven't you, girl? I used to be a security officer for a hospital. Right. And then I went and changed that after a really a bad tragic thing happened at, in the ER and I just couldn't deal with that kind of Yeah, I, I, you have a video on that and you've talked about I just can't yeah. imagine how people that work in the ER, it's like it's we like drama but not that kind of drama no, not and when it's real people Then I switched over to be a custodian Now Jim, <laughs> he was a tire manager and he changed tires on semis mm -hmm. and RVs so that's right. that's why I like I mean he's good about always checking those tires on the RV and keeping them intact and checking. <laughs> when you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And I see some of these people that worked in tires and now they're, you know, telling about RVs and like, God, is there that many things you need to know about tires? But there really is. And he would be the one to, maybe he should have a little seminar out there and make her. <laughs> Take copious notes for his sessions. But no, it is really true is that, you know, tires, and brakes, they're pretty important things. I'm not saying other things aren't important. It's nice to have your armor roof, but um, yeah, it's like when you have your moment of need, tires and brakes, man, please, oh, please, oh, please. <laughs> yeah, but no, I guess, yeah, you were able to get, you know, transfer jobs when you were, you know, like you say, working for the schools and get back mm -hmm. to where you're at. And it is nice to have transferable skills from one spot to another. So you were able to hit the ground running where you're at. And um, as long as your health holds out, you're able to just go ahead and um, continue on. Well, when I got the job at the school, when they was interviewing me, they go, "Do you have you had experience in cleaning?" And I said, "Honey, I have five boys. I've cleaned everything." <laughs> <laughs> she goes, "Oh, I'm sorry." <laughs> but yeah, you were talking about having a separate kitchen and a separate. Um, what yeah. was the other room? The living room. We were saying. Yeah, the living room and our kitchen yeah. is kind of separate. Yeah. So, so us two, they are kind of separate. But, uh, you know, it's like we have a breakfast bar and then a, a sofa that kind of separates them. Mm -hmm. But um, we we don't really need more separate like that, because if I start like trying to coach Grace, she just gets the ladle out there and she whacks me one if I get yeah, too much information. <laughs> She's like, OK, sorry, John, I didn't mean you. you're doing fine, sweetheart. <laughs> but we will relax. We just recently took out our dining room table and chairs because that's where Tucker's playpen goes that he sleeps in. So. Oh, how big is it a standard size playpen? Yeah. That's well, clever. Well, it, it's one of those snap together ones that I yeah. got at Walmart. Yeah. Kind yeah. of snap together. You know, now that you mentioned that, you know, we have like, um, in our, we have a class C RV and yeah. it's, um, it has a 12 foot slider that comes out. This is a Fleetwood icon pulse are both the same. And, uh, then there's, you know, two poles you can put down and put the table on. We, we have never really used it, but we went to Walmart when we were going around the United States in um, 80 days. And we saw where there's like this little folding table. And it's just like, it's perfect for the two of us. So, it puts on the slide of the couch there. It fits right in. And um, but a bang, but a boom, as they say. So, yeah, some of the stuff you get at Walmart. At the, yeah, we just never sit down at the table. We're either sitting outside eating mm -hmm. or we're just sitting here in our recliner and watching something on TV. 
and well we need a place for tucker so we put it there yeah well i don't know don't judge me too harshly uh, you can judge me harshly don't get judge grace <laughs> but you know so often in the evening we're sitting back and we want to relax and it's like we don't watch tv but man do we binge on some of the um special shows i don't know if what you do if you have like regular tv shows or you have series but to me i like if i wait three or four seasons and then it's like oh this must be pretty good if, especially if it's like uh, the one that one of my buddies said oh longmire and it's like oh a cowboy movie i don't know i like 310 to yuma i love that movie but um we kind of get into some of these and it's like okay supper time it's like we do one show one night and then one show the other night we do watch the americans also and it's like uh, it's just kind of a nice way to get a release i don't know if you ever watch yeah. much tv or whatever well we uh we have you know amazon prime on the tv and you can mm -hmm. watch uh, like little house on the prairie the whole s series of that or another series of something else and we'll kind of switch things up like yeah exactly that type of thing is where you get enough variety and Grace tells me, no, no hook or anything like that. But she says, we have a half hour left. And she says, Michael, you've been flapping your jaws. No. She wants to open up for questions. And if somebody wants to come aboard, if they want to be part of this glorious interview process, could you stay for another half hour until um, yeah. it's Gina's time? Yeah, I awesome. Can. Okay. So anybody's got any questions, put a big Q for question. If you want to come aboard, I guess that, um, let's see if I can figure this out. I think if I go down here to um invite i'm going to click that and um, i'm going to copy it to clipboard and uh, okay i'm going to hit right down there and it's going to show so you see that link there that is where you can come aboard if you prefer to ask a question if you would rather just call in, you don't like the video, but just the audio, I can give you the dial-up telephone number. We can do all kinds of ways to do that. So you can be yeah. at one with us. So yeah. do we have anybody? I'm, I'm going to be looking in the green room. If you want to come in, just click that link. And I don't know, Susan, you're probably a lot faster. You know how us men, we're not the fast in this stuff. But if I now go over to YouTube and... Oop, uh oh, stop that, Michael. Don't get the voice there. Okay, stop that. And up there, um, where is the link? Yeah, right there. And um, oh, I don't want that one. What's that, darling? Oh, she's put it at the top. My wife has pinned it for me. I'm taking her job away. Sorry, darling. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so I'm back again. So yeah, there is um, at the top, it should be pinned or down at the bottom. If you want to come aboard, we would be happy. If you just want to ask a question, we'll still be happy. We are happy campers, but in the next 28 minutes, tell us some of your questions. Um, if you want to be part of the interview process too, that is cool. So this is your chance to be part of the family. And I hear a little bit of my voice in the background, which means I didn't turn down the audio 100%. I'm sorry if that's, oh, silence is golden. Can you still hear me, Susan? Yeah. Yeah, the Susan? yeah. okay. So we're there. And I just, yes, want, Grace. I just want, want Michael's trying to get Teresa to buy him a new drone, the reason he keeps crashing it. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I don't know if he wants a bigger drone, a newer drone. You know, it's like... First, it was like my Phantom one. It was like you didn't have any type of video. You had to add like the old GoPros on. I think it was a GoPro one or two I had. And then, but that was just recorded. And then, like, if you want to see what's recording, I got my fat chart. So here comes somebody up. And um, let's see. I, I know we're going to have at least audio. Oh, I'm seeing a face come aboard. Granny looks like she is there in five four three two one welcome aboard hi. granny ann's travel hi. welcome hi howdy hi. <laughs> how are, are you, you? <laughs> i well, am where are you find yourself west today oregon. oh northwest oregon let's see we were central a little bit west oregon do you know where um we were at I'd like yes. to say Elsie Falls, but um, <laughs> you know it's yeah, it's almost pronounced that way. But you know, not too far from Eugene is where we were at a couple of weeks ago. Have you been there? Yes. Nice country, and yours is too. How long you lived there? I've been here with my daughter since two thousand seventeen. 
wonderful good place to call home. Mm -hmm. And um, have you got to Beautiful. go to, yeah. So have, have you got a chance to go to any of the um, meetup with boys and girls, you know, small, medium or large, or have you just been mostly like what we've done? A lot of times we're just kind of the, the lone wolves. So have you met up with anybody yet? Uh, uh, no, I have not. Well, I hope you get a chance if you're interested, you know, uh, we're talking about going up to Oregon again next year. And Grace said, um, you know, a couple years in a row, we have loved the area up there by, uh, well, south of you a ways, a bit, a couple hundred miles. But I don't know if you've been to um, uh, Crescent City or Ferndale or that area up in Eureka. But um, we're talking about you maybe having a meet, meet up around there and then maybe spend some time in Oregon. So. Maybe we can come up your way next year if you're going to be around. Yeah. Yes, so, it would be beautiful. So if you heard, have uh, you heard about Mayberry? Really pretty around here. It rains this time of the year. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have. <laughs> Do you have any questions for Susan? Uh, yeah. Hey, Susan, how long you been RVing? Oh. Good question. Hang on a minute, I'll figure it out. My husband's figuring it out. Okay, it's going to be a number here. Now, you won't have to memorize it. There may be a test, but you don't have to memorize He says 20 years. 20? This is our fourth oh, RV. This is our fourth RV. Wow. And between the two of you, so let's see. How many years do you think that Grace and I have been RVing? Hmm. Well, we've been married. Um, oh, it seems like, no, we've been married about five years now. It's, um, but yeah, it seems like it's been just right is what I'm saying. And so, um, but um, we have, well, let's see. The RV is, um, let's see, about 10 years old now. So what, how long do you think we've been RVing? Hmm. Do you think we, we didn't get it new? Oh, I will wow. say that. If that helps. Uh, 15? 13 years. Three years. So it's been only about five. Uh, going on five now. So that was a good Whoa. guess. That's what you would think by everything. <laughs> but um, hey, it was a bit of bang, bit of boom for us. It's like, yeah, <laughs> we um, got going quick. And so we, we've loved it, though. And um you know, at first we were doing kind of like the weekend war, maybe more than that. But, um, you know, it's like California travel videos. Are we allowed to go out of state? Yes, we're allowed to go out of state. So, <laughs> but um, then when um, I finished my um, assignment as Rotary president, it's like, okay, Grace, it's, I know it's been harder for you than me. You know, when you're supporting the president and all the stuff that goes on behind it when you, you know, host guests and things like that. And so we said, you know, um, now's the time to get away. So we went on that 80 days around the U.S. And um, I can't remember how many gallons we put on Grace. You may remember if it was like 400 or 800, but we went about um, hmm, 8,000 miles, I think it was. So, you know, I think, I think oh, it's 3,000 miles across and 3,000 miles back. No, that's not the way it works. You're going to need more than that 6,000 miles, but it was enjoyable. And so, Susan, we went as far south and, and we weren't going to go this far south, but I was kind of like, Grace, I need to go down. So I need to go to South Carolina. I heard about Myrtle Beach, or Myrtle Beach, Myrtle Beach, and I. Yeah, so we went as like far as Myrtle South Beach. Carolina too. I love to get yeah. to South Carolina. Yeah. But they have a nice KOA campground. We know normally stay there, but you know it's kind of mm -hmm. like what you were saying when it gets hot and humid. And so we thought, well, we want to stay as close as we can to the ocean in this case because there's not a lot of mountains there in South Carolina that I was aware of. So we thought, well, if we can stay right by the coast, then it, you know it's a little cooler by the ocean. So, um, Granny Annie's, um, how far away are you from the ocean? Three and a half miles. Oh my gosh! Lucky you, man. How about that? <laughs> fresh, fresh seafood. <laughs> Fresh seafood is true. Now, Grace loves to have her shrimp. I mean, that's something that is delicacy for me. I'm a salmon yeah. kind of guy, but uh, I mean, I'll eat other things too. But yeah, fresh seafood is wonderful. 
So what do you have, well, Susan, you know. out your way? Huh? Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. What do you have out your way, Susan? What's your <laughs> delicacy? <meal? laughs> in the end, it don't have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, come on. Come but on. in Tennessee oh, now, it's barbecue. 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 Yeah. And Granny, you were going to say, what, what do you, what's your foods that you like? Uh, I was going to say the salmon run so thick up here across the rivers that you could almost walk across them. Oh, wow. In fact, you know, here's something interesting about about that is that we have a Siberian Husky and he's um, uh, oversized. He looks like maybe he's some, some white. We're not going to, we're not going to admit it, but um, he is um, a good sized dog. He's a woolly, which means there's a lot of extra hair. And so, um, you know, I thought, well, you know, is he a retriever? He does, you know, until it stops, he'll go after it. But once it stops, it's like, well, what's, what, what do I do with now? He doesn't, he's not interested in retrieving, but when he gets to the water, he doesn't like to go all the way in, but when he gets part way in, and if you throw a rock that is near him and it splooshes the water, I think that he's like, thinks it's salmon. Cause he'll like, he'll bite the water. He'll go after it. So now I don't know if when he was a boy, he used to live up in Alaska. I don't know if he got it from there, but um, yeah, he'd come your way. He's like, Hey, Dad, no problem. I'll get you some salmon. You just wait. <laughs> but he's never actually seen a salmon, so I don't know what would happen. But, yeah, I, I love um, up there in your area. It um, kind of reminds me of Northern California on the coast up there by Eureka. Have you, how far, what's the far the south you've been in your state? Me? Oh, yeah, I've been um, to uh, Crescent Lake. Oh, nice. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, now, the farthest I've been up in Indiana is Elkhart. I have been up there and around and, and, uh -huh. northern Indiana. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you like to go a certain time of year there, Susan? Um, we I like to see it in the fall. I think it would be beautiful in the fall. Um, like I said, we haven't been there since the boys were little, so that was basically in the summertime, and it was. It was really pretty because everything was so green and the gar the Amish gardens were, you know, how they just yeah. had everything in just perfect mm -hmm. rows. I mean, perfect. And it's just, a, it's, it's pretty time of the year. And yeah. that Michael mm -hmm. Santana, whatever, we're going to be staying at the Oregon Inlet. And it's, I don't know if it's a national or state park, but American Beautiful Pass gets you half off there, so. Yeah, speaking of that, um, so, you know, gosh, we've got Harvest Host, and we still haven't used it. We got it a couple of years ago, so we got it at an even better price that they said they're going to grandfather. So, you know, we're really happy about that. But, um, you know, we we don't always plan ahead of time. I take that back. We hardly ever plan much ahead of time. Now, to go into state parks here in California, especially this time of year, it's like, you know, you need to get a reservation ahead of time most of the time. A lot of the places we go, if it happens to be um, using our Passport America or, um, well, we'll look on All Stays and a couple other applications and see what we find. Well, sometimes it's an Elks Club. We're fortunate to have an Elks Club membership, and um, they'll give you plenty of good lubrication when you go to their um, lodge. <laughs> but, um, no, there's um, a lot of fun places to stay, and when you can get them for – good value then you know all the better right but we haven't done too much boondocking we have um, not stayed overnight at a cracker barrel yet i um, when i went on my way to quartzsite did stay at um the equivalent of a cabela's at some um, bass pros here in california yeah. yeah but um yeah those have been great so yeah um it was here's kind of our our story in a nutshell is that if I was going to get solar a couple of years ago and I thought, well, if we're not going out that often, that much of the time, I don't know if it's worth it because we have a 2K, 2,000 watt inverter goes to our alternator. As long as we're running the RV, you know, we have plenty of power to charge up our e-bikes or laptops or whatever. But then I thought, well, you know, maybe with the COVID thing is we're going to be having to do more boondocking. And so, yeah, we um, are now able to, and we got, um, what, 400 watts of solar uh, we're pretty much good to go when it comes to staying off grid. Um, mm -hmm. We have enough water to keep us going for a week. So how about um, you guys? Um, 
Do you have any solar in yours? I don't remember if you do. Mm -hmm. No, so you don't. So you you normally stay at well, and when you got a big rig like that, you normally do stay at a some kind of a um, park mm -hmm. or whatever, right? Um, well, like the place we're going to stay at there in North Carolina, it's just a water and electric, and I yeah, water and electric. You know, we'll have to do the dumping of our tanks. Um, now we can do electric. We can stay on electric only for like a week or two, you know, before our tanks get filled. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And of course we do have a generator. We can That's run nice. Generator. Like our national parks in the Smoky Mountains are some of those you really have to watch because solar doesn't do you too much good because of the trees. They're I so know you're going with that. Yeah. When we were up at Shenandoah, we were mm -hmm. definitely in the shade there. And now then they do have some that, We'll have their sites where, you know, you will get some sun. Mm -hmm. You can use your solar panels. But in some of them, yeah, because it is so shaded. Uh, right. In the Cades Cove area, it is a very shaded one. So you're not going to get no solar energy or whatever. They're not going to yeah. work. Yeah. And, and you that's where, you know, because we have the inverter, our um, alternator on our sprinter is... Um, 200 amps and you multiply the voltage you know 12 volts or roughly to the amps mm -hmm. and so you know we definitely with if we can just get a thousand watts of power out of not using all the power that comes out of the engine um the battery that we have that recharge it's a super fast one it um, will charge up in like a little over an hour so you know if we need to run the rv for an hour and then we're good to go um i don't know how many kilowatts you have but we don't use that many kilowatts in a day mm -hmm. And of course, our refrigerator is gas or electric, so that's the it. thing. Yeah, well, that's that's I, what we have also. That was a must. I mean, I said I don't want a refrigerator. The re residential ones are nice, but mm -hmm. then you know you're going to be have to watch that energy. You're going to have to, you know, watch everything. So <laughs> this one has ran off gas or electric. So. I'm sorry, I'm laughing. Is excuse me for being distracted because we're talking about gas and electric, and like. <laughs> Guilty as charged. I'm sorry, Grace. You know, the devil made me do it. But, you know, for some reason, when we got started up and, um, you know, we have all the stuff in the freezer and the refrigerator and we get up there and I don't know where somehow, you know, when you, you run in the electric and then it goes to um, gas and it somehow I didn't push the button to change it over. It doesn't always do it automatically, but if you push the button, it's fine. But um, we get up there to um, Alsea Falls and it's like, okay, we look in the freezer and the freezer is like not real cold. And it's like, we look at all the, like my ice cream sandwiches and Grace's um, keto friendly ice cream and it's soup. <laughs> you know, it's like, uh -oh. this is emergency yeah. conditions. And so it's like, I'm so sorry, darling. Cause we thought at first the refrigerator was out. No, the button wasn't pushed. I mean, duh. Whoa. So, um, you know, so here's the thing. Okay, so um, some of the food is like it's still going to be good, you know. And, and how good is it going to be if it how if it's is still cold, you know? Is it like forty degrees? Is it fifty degrees? And so, I, when I did the video for it, um, I had you know like with the um, subtitles where you put like a little smart app, up so with a, a smart remark down at the bottom. I'm like, okay, we've got some more food. Anybody want some of our salmon? I think it's still fresh, you know. <laughs> It's like nobody wants to get sick on food. So I do you feel okay. lucky? The ice cream being wasted was a sin right there. I, I know that's the you know, can't we refreeze oh, it now? It doesn't refreeze. Know. But, you know, it's funny, you know, ice cream is the body craves salt. The body craves sugar. The body craves fat. They take the three of those together, mm -hmm. they mix it, they fold it with air, and they call it ice cream. No, it's gotta be good if your body craves all three of those, doesn't it? <laughs> And nursing her travel place. No, not the ice cream. Yeah, that's what Grace had to say. You you and her must be two sisters from another mother. But but Granny Ann, how about you? Have you ever done much traveling up in your part of the state? Or do you have any secrets to share with us on where you like to go? Yes, I do. There's on the highway six between Portland and Tillamook, Oregon, there is so many dispensed dispensed free campsites that people don't even know. If you see a dirt road, 
you're best off to pull off and go look at it because you will be surprised what's at the end of that road. You know, we were just talking, I think it was to Kevin and somebody else about the fact is that there's, and, and Grace was saying is that, yeah, there are a lot of places in Oregon that um, I guess they're dispersed camping and they're not even necessarily on the map. There's so many of them, right? Right. That's, that's marvelous that you have that there. And um, so, you know, I was, we did, once we got through by Eugene, we thought, well, which way do we go? You know, we still had another three or four days and we thought, well, we'd like to see Crater Lake um, and we'd like to go out to the ocean and we'd like to go up north. I, I wanted to go to the Columbia River there at the border to um, Washington. But is that what you're kind of talking is near the Columbia River? Is that the kind of area? Uh, no, it's uh, more close to uh, right across from Portland. If you go draw direct Oh, okay. West line from Portland. Mm -hmm. There's a road, a highway that goes across there. And that highway has so many dispersed campsites there that you would not believe. And a lot of them are not listed. Even at the free campsites and all that, it's not listed. So, yeah, I imagine you... Um people from Oregon, you don't like, shh, don't, don't tell the people from California. You know, they <laughs> joke with us. The reason they said, I don't know if you ever heard this one there, Susan, but they say the reason that um, Oregon's so green is for California money. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, you know, that, that's fine. <laughs> but yeah, you do have a beautiful yeah, state. We're planning on eventually one day make our way to Oregon, but it won't be this year. It will no. not be this year. Yeah. Yeah, but you have it on your um, your bucket list, right? Yeah. I mean, I love to go out to Wyoming and all that, but you've got to watch when you go to some of these states because of the winter. So. And Gracie seeking adventures here. Hey, Gracie, we had some good times with you, sister, but we're not going to tell you like what else what an we awesome did. Meet, an awesome meetup up there in Oregon. Oh, we did. Yeah, it was, um, you know... I, it could have been bad weather. I mean, it was great weather, but it, it didn't really matter. We were going to have fun doing things. And, um, you know, it was just like um, whether it was the morning, midday, evening, but, you know, just a sense of community and, you know, sharing food right. together and sharing stories together and things like that. And, um, you know, some of us are, you know, we've got like some electrical background. If somebody else is like, said, hey, you know, I've got some right. issues. Um, Gracie had where, I don't know if you ever had this, but it's, it might be good to know is that, you know, if you don't have a good connection between your battery post on your RV engine and the clamp, if it's, you know, you can like wiggle it. And if it's like a little bit loose or it's got oxidization, you know how they get like a white powder on it. Yeah. If you have either of those, it's not going to conduct electricity very well. It's like, you know, a fuse is just a small filament and that's kind of what happens to the connection. And so hers, I know she could just spin it. And I thought, well, it needs to be tightened down. Well, it was already as tight as it could be. Well, for some reason, the clamp and the battery post, they just were, the, they weren't sized right. And I like... I said, do you have any aluminum foil? Yeah. I thought, well, it's um, definitely will conduct electricity. So bring out a piece. I'll fold it over three or four times, and then I'll put it on the battery post, and I'll put the connector on. I had to loosen it up, and then I tighten it, and it's got now it's really wedged in there. So, you know, sometimes it's just a little simple thing, and it's like, yeah, when she gets back, maybe in the future, can have it, you know, with a different clamp put on, but is sometimes it's just a little fix because she was like every day you have to use a transfer switch you know sometimes we find workarounds but right. it's nice to know and that's one of the th great things with we all kind of contribute to kind of one ha person helps another and um and um troy uh with um let's see rat pack adventure i think is what it is and he's like um, really good with rvs he's been trained in it and when it came to the hot water heater grace and i are like mm hot water heater what's that we've never used our hot water heater in four years it's like you know if we want hot water we just do something in the microwave and we don't you know we used to, our shower guess what it's it's all storage you know we have a lot of storage as you do talked about there so we have other ways to clean our bodies and if we need to we'll go into a truck stop you know the trucker stop they're cool you know and so we'll 
Brent won. But anyway, <laughs> the point being is, you know, sometimes we have these kind of workarounds. And if it's really bad, and Susan, you're laughing. It's really, I'll just have... I'll have Kaliki on my side, but I'll just have him lick me. Just lick me. Would you lick me, please? Because <laughs> I see your dog. Don't laugh now. I know. I see your little Pomeranian. He licks your face. You don't need to wash your face. Don't give That's me right. that. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Oh, my goodness. So, at any rate, um, I did want to get one thing because we only got about four or five minutes. Man, time flies when we're having fun. But I wanted to go to um, yeah. their channel with Grant or was it New Horizons channel and I'm going to like click a button and if I'm lucky and I need luck so I'm going to go over here to that I think did it and now we're going to make Michael's going to be small Michael mini Michael okay oh, I'm small boy you and, are um, yeah I guess I got to go gosh there's so many different buttons you have to push you know, Grace. <laughs> oh Grace did that thank you darling oh, okay so you're on the side panels wow Grace man you saved my bacon baby he doesn't even know I'm in the room and actually I have two computers so I hit control and page <laughs> down no nope. control Grace and page up. the husband <laughs> <laughs> exactly right okay control and page <laughs> down all right well I'm gonna go over here we're going to take a look at her channel. And first off, I want to say is like, look at the heading. I mean, when I saw that, it's like so, it's beyond professional. You must have spent $5,000 for, look at the top of it. There. Is that not That's, the most beautiful? Yeah, Where did you get that? Northwoods RV Life, Corey Hackett does it. Yeah, you know, he mentioned that he did something. But I didn't know that was what he did. When we got, to, well, he created my other one. And then when we got Tucker... I, need, I want to incorporate him. And he goes, well, send me some photos. Because I said, I need a new sticker. And I sent him a picture of Abby. And I sent him a picture of Tucker. And a, uh, he had a picture of me. And he found a picture of Jim. And he just put it all together. And so we just ordered the flag. And we got it flying now with that design on it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what you paid. I'm not going to ask you, but it is certainly worth over $500. I mean, it is, I mean, you know, with the, just think of like the fonts for the um, name of the Who, New Horizons, that font set there, helping you overcome your handicap. Uh, I've seen some other work he's done. He's did for um, Tim, who was also at our it, RV rally, Time for Exploring, did, and did a and good did, one for Tim. And did Forever Best Friends. Forever Best Friends, right, is another one there, right, for her. Yeah, he, so. he create um, everything I've, Put on my thumbnails that little bit by a pink mm -hmm. thing. I told you my colors were pink and purple, and voila! Yeah, and I want to comment on that also. If you, if you look at it there on the ones you did for Mount Airy and things, notice how on the left side they have the purple, excuse me, a violet. Um, Grace, you can correct me because I only know the basic colors, but you, know, you can tell me what. Oh, here it is, yeah, Michael. I'm yes. going to come in. We've got a minute and 27 seconds, and I oh, want we do. To oh, my you. gosh. That's why okay. I'm here. I um, want to remind everybody we are going to do a raid with Van Life with Gina. So I've gone ahead and put that into the comments. And I also want to take a minute to make sure that we thank our mods who are so special and so important to us. We hey, really hey. I've got to. Said, thank you all for being yeah. here. And I'm going back to the basement. Okay. okay. For the mods. Oh, I said, bro. No. <laughs> knock, knock, knock. Who's there? Nailed it. Nailed it. Thank you so much for that. That was great, Jace. But as we look at the end of it here, if you take a look at um, on the screen, we're taking a look at some of the videos. I'm looking at Social Blade, and here's one that is uh, was published on November 12th, and it has 4,100 views, 37 comments. Next one, RV underwater pigeon forge flood, campground yeah. flooded. 168 comments. What's up with you, girl? <laughs> hey, I could I, went, I guess everybody likes drama. When I saw a campground being flooded, Pigeon Forge floods twice a year, and I was there when it flooded. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. So I think that's all we have for time for. I hope you enjoyed the show. I just, it was oh, immense. You guys are so much so fun. Much, Thank you for coming on. Best to all of you. 
and um, especially um, for Jim in the background, for Grace in the background, thank you. And great to have you, Granny, up here. And uh, oh, there he is. Hey, Jimbo. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm hoping we can get that way. But if somebody beats us to the last two spots, I, I understand because if we're slow pokes, so get those ones and go over to New Horizons, sign up. And, and Granny, I hope we can have some people come over to your sites also. So it is time, 5.59, a couple seconds, Ken. So going over to you know who rocks. Gina. Yes, Ray rocks. And also is Gina. She is going to have a fun show this evening. So thank you. And Tracy, oh my goodness, $10 super sticker. Bless you all. Thank you for your time and all your love, hugs, and like well, I finish you, every Michael, show. For everything you do. Thank oh, you, you bet, sweetie. It. Can't wait to see you in the flesh. It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> we get a chance to meet you. Oops, didn't mean it that way. Happy <laughs> trails to you until we meet again. Peace out. 